Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. It is Shirley with Spirit of Matter. And let's take an astrology walk together. This video is about Mars and Pluto aspects. Um, basically in synastries and composites. But it was entailed for the natal chart as well. So, Mars, okay? Um, when we think relationships, Mars is about action. Uh, Mars is about direction. Mars is naturally the passion that you have, the drive, the passion, and it's true. Pluto is about transformation. Pluto is about the compost, decomposing and um, and the hidden wealth. Think about the fruits that you throw out to the garden and then you water it and you water and you nourish the soil and then some of the fruits have their seeds spreading and you have plants growing. I had a Facebook friend that had papaya tree is now growing in her garden just because somebody threw, threw it out to the air. Okay, so if you think about garbage when, when it, we talk about uh, things that actually uh, decay, decompose, then we're not talking about something bad, but about the recycling that brings in new life. This is why Pluto is also associated with birthing. And so, the conjoining of Pluto and Mars is that if we have an easy or hard aspects, we are heading towards the birthing of a new direction. Together. As I'm thinking about the people I, ha I have this right now in Sinistries and Composites, I'm like, damn. <laughs> um, but definitely we are birthing a new direction. We are birthing new initiations, new innovations. We are birthing um, new ways to experience passion, drive, um, transforming our thoughts about Mars or how we act in our life, how we do Mars in our lives. And so, with the hard aspect, it's a crisis that leads to that transformation. And I'm thinking about the old relational teaching, a very, you know, you would say stigmatic, but quite useful. If you replace men and women and with person, and you understand where to put the Mars, you see where it's useful. And it's a teaching about how men think and why they never ask for direction. It's not relevant to most societies today, but if a man drives fast, it will collide into the tree until before he has to change his way. Okay, most men aren't like that at all. Some women are. Um, this is true, no? But this is a teaching that Mars, in hard aspect, do anything, will collide into the tree before it changes its direction or lowers its speed. And this is the hard aspect. Some, it's, a, it's, an, it's a collision aspect that drives like a dynamo, okay? Uh, hard aspects are also manifesting aspects. And so, um, the various forms in which this can happen, but you understand that the imagery of a person driving a car and then colliding into a tree before they listen to better advice. And it's not about gender. We all have Mars in our chart. And I invite you to listen to uh, Ksenia Moore, who talks about uh, Mars and how important it is, even if you are 
wanting to play the woman role or uh, the stigmatic uh, role, feminine role uh, in relationship, for it to be equal, for you to be happy in relationship, you have to embody your marks. Okay? And this is a great Ksenia Moore teaching that I remember from years back. Um, and so it's not about gender. Okay? It's about acting on your passions. Your passions, whether they are in bed, outside of bed, in business, real estate, having a house. Okay? It's also housing, maybe moon, but Mars is real estate. And so, now that we have nice view, I can calm my breath. <laughs> and so with the hard aspects, you came here to transform something and there is a manifesting, a more fated, okay? Begin with the most difficult first. When you have this, it's important to understand that uh, Pluto is outer planet and so your personal crisis with your partner, business partner, boss, child, um, colleague, friend, okay, although it's, it's quite, as you understand, Mars is quite, uh, it's ruling the penis, so, and the blood, and the blood, uh, and the name, names, of the name of a person, um, but can appear also in relationships where you don't have sex. Okay, you can have this with your child when you don't have sex, or hopefully, um, uh, for for both you and the child actually. And so, <laughs> and sometimes that's what you came here to transform, right? That you that you don't do that. Um, uh, but Pluto is outer planet. It means that your personal crisis is not at all personal. It's a crisis with the, the zeitgeist, the spirit of a generation, or in between generations, depending on where it's a synastry, a composite, it can be also between the generations, okay? Um, for example, if you think about the times where it was custom for uh, the state, let's say Pluto, Pluto Capricorn years, to have um, uh, housing for family. And it seemed logical, nobody thought about anything like that. So for young couples, when they marry, have good mortgage conditions and uh, have uh, like lottery over houses so that they can get their life together, okay? As crises came about and needs changed, we found out that with the ability to have divorce, Many couples separate and there's domestic violence and there's this and there's that. And so, and many couples not monogamous at all. And so the need to have more than one house per family, whether by divorce, by preference, um, by uh, business uh, trips, okay? One person is working and they have a business and they have to be in another place on the country for quite a while. And so... Up until the government or the economy accommodates for this type of lifestyle, we have a crisis. Okay, what happened during COVID? A lot of domestic violence. And so a lot of people were exposed to the fact that it's not just what the decision of the person, how they act in crisis and so on, but also if you cram people for too much, then they begin to get crazy. They begin to act out, not just men. Everybody begins to go crazy and drive each other crazy. You need space. So this is where um, the conjoining of your relation came to change, transform something. Now again, Mars uh, housing is one because Mars is real estate, but it's also anything to do with innovation, investments, okay? Also sexuality, okay? Um, uh, let's say now we talk about uh, Pluto in Aquarius with all these decentralized regimes. We see attempts to and even 
the decisions to legalize pedophilia, which we know is uh, so incredibly harmful. As uh, if you want to create a child assassin, that's what you do. Okay, and so what the crisis is that the people, if it's a child, is problematic, but perhaps at older age, is for to change how people, uh, uh, the, the way people think about sex. Okay, over the way people think about fashion, over the way of, uh, of where can you put the penis, okay, and, 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 and those things that are related. Um, so yes, it can also be about uh, the taboo topics, Pluto, around sexuality. But this is, the hard aspect is crisis. Hard aspects would be the square, which is the Mars aspect, the very manifesting aspect, the opposition, okay, and to some degree also the conjunction, okay, conjunction uh, can also be a, a difficult aspect because they're so close together that they are kind of forced to blend energies, okay, so you kind of force and it's fated encounter, it doesn't mean that you have to stay, sometimes the, the, what people call the lesson is to separate, which is also Mars. And there could be a crisis around uh, separation, but in any way, because it's Pluto, you are not dealing with a personal crisis. And there are going to be taboo topics around finances, penises, um, um, anal sex, because Pluto and Mars rule secretion. Um, investments, patents, innovation, so you could say also creative rights, uh, birthing, um, the use of weapon, okay, the use of weapon, changing how you think, okay, for, for example, if you take the mass shootings when Pluto was in Sagittarius in schools in the United States, everybody said, oh, the Second Amendment, it is outdated. We need to remove, we take the guns uh, no longer. Okay, now when we see what is coming with all the globalism and all that, the people say, invoke the Second. Okay, well, what can you invoke the Second? Not modern weapon, or you need bigger weapon. Okay, so people change for the way they think about arms, which is another Mars topic. This is not gone in the, uh, oh, strategy, of course, strategy, which is also Mars. People think about strategy and with hard aspects. If it is sinistry, one person will play the Mars, one will play the Pluto. They are so similar, except that Pluto is representing of a generation. So the person who is the Pluto is representing of a generational perception. And Pluto also transforms here. Mars transforms Pluto, Pluto transforms Mars. Okay? And this is generational perception. Of uh, that, that Mars comes and transforms. Uh, but Mars is more the personal planet. This person's strategy uh, uh, collides with my generational view of this strategy. And now, when we have tension, we have a conversation, but there is a crisis around this. And yes, this crisis. Um, on a mundane level can be bloody when there are Mars hard aspects to Pluto transit in the sky people are scared okay but this is not easy aspect um, for remedy always good to bring in a synastry or a composite with the Mars trine or sextile Pluto now let's go to the Mars trine or sextile Pluto it's the same topics. The difference between a hard aspect and a harmonious aspect 
is basically the difference between two people that say the same exact thing with the same exact wording and one person you say no 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 this is bullshit no don't i don't want to hear about that and for the other person say you know what let's try that and the two people can go crazy because they say the same exact thing in the same exact phrasing why are you responding to one person with this is bullshit oh no no i don't want to hear that and to the other person yeah let's try that this sounds like a good idea because one is meeting you from a square and the other from a sextile or a trine this is why mars is in relationships are so important hard aspect between the marses is mutual emasculation and this is where people just argue with each other though they may like each other and they're equal competi competitors uh, but they are working with the egos working against each other whereas where is trying a sextile then um, then they cooperate and they just might have an agreement on what you argued with the square that's <laughs> that's basically where it's at now sometimes you have a combination of the square and the uh, sextile um, and this may be that you said a person no, no 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 i cut away i go away you go away you're traveling like oh that bugs me uh, and then you see you think about that that person and then that person like Oh, but they had a solution for that. And then you come back. And then you kind of you sever ties to come back. Or there's a crisis, but there is also some support. If it's a, it's a, a, um, both annoying and crisis and potentially dangerous, <laughs> but also liberating and transforming because you can tap into the sextile or the trine. I don't want you to underestimate um uh, the crisis part okay it's par excellence aspect that when we predict violence in the world wars and all of the other kind of them complex then we predict you should know what the sentence means if you listen to me if not watch my videos you're gonna need to know that what it means um the, and, and this is exactly where Mars, Pluto, hard aspects. Uh, uh, th this is what uh, happens unless we somehow manage to uh, remedy it. Okay? And so, uh, for example, I had a client that was coming to me for various composites. At the time, I was doing composite readings and uh, eventually looked into the natal chart and so on and uh, they changed for for the partners okay every time better partner every time better partner then they come to me they're like i am happy i know that i am happy but just look at the chart and i see mars square pluto now this person had this in their natal chart so what they would need is so to somehow accommodate for for the trine as i said i see that this person is already into the relationship and i said well but you have to make sure you have separate accounts separate real estate separate houses and they were like what separate the ears flying i call it the ears flying because uh, I, I i have like a cartoon image of where you see kind of like a picture of a cat and then they hear something they don't like or they're shocked by it and then you see like their ears flying <laughs> and, so, and she gave me the ears flying um, because nobody used to think about that but lo and behold these people were very uh, supportive of each other's real estate uh, real estate with each other's business and earning capacity okay and so Pluto is a generational planet. It requires for you to change how your generation deals with this crisis. Don't, don't think that any time that this aspect is not triggered in the composite or the synastry or your natal chart, you won't have it another change. Okay, right now I'm in my Pluto square Pluto, which is ruled by Mars. And Pluto is co-present with Mars 
uh, uh, yes, and you've heard about my Mars enough <laughs> by now. <laughs> uh, but um, but this is coming in my life, okay? For the, all these aspects to Pluto Mars, to Pluto Venus, to Pluto Sun, okay? Because I will be having this Pluto square and then square my Venus, square my Sun, uh, and eventually square my Mars. <laughs> so. I'm heading for two decades. <laughs> uh, two decades um, that are interesting. Uh, and so I want you to remember that when, when you begin to see these hard aspects and composites and sinistries, the first thing that you do is to get away. <laughs> Maybe this will work for you. As I always say, if it's not in the book, don't put it in the book. If it keeps coming up, then you want to understand what brings it up because you're going to have to deal with that. Okay, if I see composite Mars, hard aspect Pluto, I tell you, if you can leave, <laughs> go. Okay, but very likely it has manifested because either it's in your chart it's in transit, it's perfected for you and the partner. And if that is the case, you have to, you have to change. <laughs> you have to change. Uh, so the harmonious aspects are going to meet these topics and facilitate a change. It's still, it's still transforming every condition that you have. It's just that there's more of a mindset of consenting to go into this transformation. Okay? Um, the, uh, the crisis meets you where you have to change something that you find it very difficult to change. And Mars is housing. It's your sexuality, your sexual drive, the, your blood, your name. Think about Mars, Pluto, hard aspects as having to change your name because of war, because of this, because of that. Various things. You say, I don't want to change that. Or, I don't want to move away. Okay, but the Mars, Pluto, hard aspects means that even if you're not moving away, you have to renovate, you have to have a, a, a complete cycle of kind of destruction and rebirthing. And this is not a personal experience. The entire world is going through this structure and it's not comfortable for you to change. Now, I want to give you a word of comfort, okay? Um, when I had a Pluto hard aspect in my Mercury, which is the ruler of my housing, and I have a Chiron there, and I have a Rahu there, which means I never had owned a house, um, I was homeless for six months, which is privileged. It's, pri it's privileged. Okay? And when people that were homeless know what I'm talking about. For six months, it's privileged to be homeless. Um... And so, at the time, I was living in the first one room apartment where my best friend had another room apartment. Okay? A separate shower, separate this, separate that. Never argued about money. But it was time for to change. And there was a crisis. Okay, with the COVID, everybody got mad. So did we. It was a crisis and then I had to walk out especially with both dabbling into the spirit and then I had they don't know what's energy trying to assassinate <laughs> any any relation that I had around me but I had to move away and to move to a bigger house and so I had gone through a process of letting go to the point that I had nothing but a, a, a wallet without money in my hand and then receiving the things that I let go of in the new apartment was so uh, where uh, the, the new apartment was so good that I was afraid to let anybody know 
uh, more than yes I am okay because <laughs> because I have you know it's kind of like you you level up <laughs> it's not my place it's not my territory but uh, and then I had to learn the fact that there were many people vying for this piece of real estate and even so much so the true readers I learned have Mercury and Mars sign um, yes I'm not gonna try to compete with the helicopter it's flying to Jordan or something it's flying to Jordan say hi <laughs> or to the Dead Sea, I hope nothing happened. It's just a world war. Um, with North Korea and Europe, there's nothing much to say. Uh, and at any case, it learned it is so much so that um, even people will try to mess or to say things about the, the tenets each uh, or every of the tenants to the landlord that uh, because they thought that they can kick away the tenants and so the landlord would give up the apartment you know the house flippers yes but the macular is for decades and even still before i lived there many people were replacing many people were replacing so by the time i got they wanted peace, I wanted peace, and I had to talisman the entire region for people to bus driver that tells me my address and ask which unit. <laughs> okay, so I was like, oh, you upgrade, you upgrade your living, um, but you still deal with those things. So um, there was a total cycle of transformation almost death and rebirth cycle which is very plutonian but also very martian scorpionic of my housing i had to change my entire thinking to go whenever they said we close the shelter to travel and then to pick what i like this door i like this uh, floor i like this bathroom i want this jacuzzi i still don't have but <laughs> okay and to design my house for to be busy for to design my house with my mindset and to manifest to go to real estate agents and to manifest for housing and so on until i got a good election or a relatively good election to sign contract and uh, and then okay for to do that and even then then you have people that wanting this thing and so on um so i was exposed to real estate it was something i didn't want to change before covid i said i'm retired it was after the me too and i went to therapy and the therapist on the one hand uh, <laughs> severed boundaries in the way that in the beginning was okay with me on the other hand he got addicted when it was not okay with me and so, and so <laughs> And and that was the story for when I was targeted individual, but I didn't know that. Um, and so I said, I'm retired. <laughs> I would sit with the neighbors every day, three times a day, and I'm retired. Uh, but that was not the end of the story for me. And I had to uh, get out of this stagnation. I wasn't uh, uh, willing to change. Uh, but I, I tried and it was a crisis every day I thought I'm going to die and it was not necessarily a, a, a paranoia <laughs> okay <laughs> so um, oh, oh shit I forgot them so that was supposed to be the good story <laughs> So the hard aspects are indeed hard aspects um, and it's a total cycle of birthing, okay, it's death and, and rebirth, um, kind of like the phoenix from the flame on something that is very powerful because it's the core of your essence, 
it, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's how you do you in the world. So it can even relate to identity as Mars also rules Aries, which is the sense of self. Um, so, yeah. I, I think I think you kind of got the message. Uh, always go for the uh, remediation of harmonious aspects and ask, set intention, okay, to receive the solutions. Um, and it's not a personal, okay, if something changes in the entire society that you are a part of this change, you are an active part of this change. So you need to take action. 